to understand what is social innovation, we have to recognize that there have been certain things that we just really haven't been able to overcome without major social change in one way or another. We've looked at the issue of achievement gaps in education. We used a legislative process with Brown versus Board of Education to say, no, separate but equal is not. However, we still have those persistent achievement gaps. Some examples in what social innovations have been. Microfinance and the Grameen Bank. It provided finance to people who were excluded from credit markets. Crowdfunding. What that does is allows us to access credit in new ways. Social impact bonds bring capital to try new ideas in social sector work, but have different risk sharing arrangements than we've ever had before. There's also new organizational forms to deliver social impact. That is a social innovation is to restructure how we do things. We have the Central LA Promise Zone, we have Slate Z, the South LA Promise Zone. They're committed to bring organizations that are already doing work in the community to kind of reorient their missions to work collectively toward that common objective and not be simply satisfied with how many people you have served as a way of judging success. You might have heard of social enterprise. Some problems that we face in society are best served through enterprise, through business. Social movements are really noticing that there is a particular social problem that has not been solved through traditional means. And we can certainly look at the civil rights movement as the canonical example. And what went on in the civil rights movement, what went on in the farm workers movement in California and so forth, these were very strategic operations to achieve an objective that had long been withheld from whole segments of society. There's a traditional approach to a social change agenda. And you wanna track it because it matters, evidence matters. After three years, maybe after five years, you tell the world we have learned something. But this particular model requires experts at each step in the process to allow it to proceed because there's a lot of risk. But did we solve the problem? We need to think about an emergent model approach. You're doing not a needs assessment, but what I call a community needs assessment. You are bringing up a different set of who are the experts. What's different about this process is that it starts with the co-production of design with the community. It requires lots of pilots and small scale interventions, if you will, that align to what it is that you're trying to achieve. It requires the knowledge creation feedback loop all along the way. But the problem with this approach is that we don't have a structure out there to obtain or deploy resources for these phases. Part of the reason is that we don't have a set of accountability structures around pilots, no matter what sector you're coming from. We have to just re-envision what it is that we do. Are we willing as kind of society doing social sector work to engage in a new process that could lead to transformative change. 